Good morning, Bridge Church. Hope you're having a great week. Here's a few things to take a look at that are going on at the Bridge this month. On Wednesday nights at 7.30 p.m., we have our prayer nights via Zoom. Just text the bridge-prayer to 77948. Also, coming up on January 10th, we have new service times at 9.30, 11.15, and 1.30 p.m. Also, returning, our teen class for grades 7 through 12 will be at 10.45 a.m., and Bridge Kids for grades 1 through 6 at 11.15 a.m. If you have the ability to make people feel welcome, just saying hello, helping people find their seats, and keeping everyone safe and comfortable during these times, our First Impressions team would love to have you join them. The team is there to support you and will provide you with everything you need. Text BRIDGE-TEAM to 77948. Join others this year as we go through the entire Bible in one year. Getting in the Bible every day, you'll experience a change in mindset and will be better prepared for life's challenges. This will begin on Zoom starting January 10th, Sundays at 6.30 p.m. For more information, text BRIDGE-BIBLE to 77948. If you'd like to find out more information, please follow us on Instagram or Facebook.
cross the borderline to space Jesus Enthroned upon the praises of our hearts Jesus You're the king and you're the center of it without contention whose power can't be questioned or contained with humble faith he rules the earth and heavens his glory knows no measure or refrain and his burst past the At this time during our broadcast, we would like to pause for a moment and give you an opportunity to share God's blessings uh, with uh, our church, the needs of the body, and also to continue to minister the Word of God. We appreciate all of you who are giving and are being faithful to doing what God has called you to do in the area of worship, as far as I'm concerned, and in, in giving to the Lord. I believe it is an act of worshiping God. It is not a side note. I believe it is an integral part of a church service and of our 
offerings to the Lord. What I'd like to do is read a portion of scripture that the Apostle Paul has written in the second Corinthians, the letter he wrote to Corinth. And this is in verse, in chapter nine, beginning in verse five. It says, so I thought it necessary to urge the brethren that they would go on ahead to you and arrange beforehand your previously promised bountiful gift that the same might be ready as a bountiful gift and not affected by covetousness. Now this I say, he who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and he who sows bountifully shall also reap bountifully. Let each one do just as he has purposed in his heart, not grudgingly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. In this portion of scripture that Paul speaks about, I'm seeing what I believe is intentionality. I believe giving is all about being intentional in the way you are offering a gift to the Lord. And I think that it's important that we do that and purpose in our heart to give unto him what he calls us to. Be it a, you give a tithe and offering and even a sacrifice above and beyond. Whatever you give to the Lord, do it purposefully, do it intentionally. And I believe God will bless you mightily. You have a lot of different ways that you can do that through online or you can send a physical check as well to the church. We leave that up to you. Let's pray and ask God's blessing upon this offering time. Father, we thank you. This is the time that we worship you through our giving, through our offering that we give to you as we purpose in our hearts to give you a gift, a sacrifice, an offering for the work of the ministry so that we may continue to serve you and to give forth the truth of the word of God where you have placed our church in this community to the hearts and the lives of the people. May each person give with a heart filled with love for you and may you bless them in return for their sacrificial offering and giving to you. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen. Thank you very much. Blessings, Bridge family. Thanks, thank you for tuning in today and, and catching us online. There is various chats that you could continue chatting and just praising the Lord. Today, we celebrate the weekend after Christmas and the weekend before New Year's. I don't know, there's got to be some name to this weekend, but we just know that we're glad you're tuning in. Thank you for connecting. Uh, I, I send a virtual hug to you and your family as we get together and go deep in his word. We've been speaking about this, uh, uh, this series upon how Christ came into the world. Jesus came into the world. Um, he gave us and freed us from our past. That is important for us to acknowledge. And then he, he not only did that, right? He went into our present and gave, gave us power into our present. Uh, Pastor Karen talked about power, you know, that he gives us as he comes in into our lives during this holiday, during this crazy um, pandemic world that we live in. And today I have the privilege to speak to you and get into the word upon the word, or not only the word, but hope. What he brings in giving us hope to our future, hope to our eventually eternal life with Jesus Christ. That's what he does. He did not only come in to free us from the past, giving us power for the present, but he has given us hope, a bright hope for our future. And I have the privilege to bring that message to you today. So sit back, grab your Bible. We're, we're big on you grabbing your Bible and just getting in the Word. Maybe you'll catch something that I said uh, or, or that the Lord just motivate you to kind of highlight if you like to write, you know, on your Bible. I tend to do that a lot. Uh, but it, it's, I want you to have that Word available to you at all the time. Pastor Karen kind of mentioned us that a bow without arrows, it's, it's pointless. So when we have those arrows, when we have the word of God really ready, we could, we could do combat with anything, with anything that obviously is not from the Lord. The next couple of days, we'll, we'll be finding us 
uh, going into this um, sense of hope for a better future, um, hope that next year will be better, right? And so we'll be having that word in our constant uh, vocabulary in the days and weeks to come. Um, New Year's resolutions, we hope we do this, we hope we do that. Uh, we hope we, we find the right person to start a relationship with. Um, we hope our family members get better uh, in the sense of our health. And, and we hope, some of us hope that we get pregnant this year, right? Uh, some of us hope that uh, hopefully at the beginning of the next quarter, you'll do better and you'll get straight A's, right? And some of us also hope people will like us. As simple as that. Sometimes we will hope to make a difference in our world. We'll probably hope on our relationships to get better and better each day. We'll hope we get that race. How many of you, how, how, how many of you hope you get that race that you were looking for? Some of us just need hope. Or need one hope that things will change in their household. That peace will abound in their homes. Every day we use that small magical word, hope. It's though uh, to live or even make it through one day without hope. But what is hope? What is hope? Based on all the examples I just gave you, there is a, ba a, a biblical text we're going to explore uh, down the road, right? Uh, and, and, but I like to define hope as this. Hope is a vision to better days. Yes, better days that changes us in the present. Yes, hope is a vi vision for better days. There's something up ahead around the corner. Insight. And it's good. But that good future is in just abstract because it reaches in and transforms us in the present. So, for example, if I'm looking for that grade to be A in my classes at school, at the university where I'm attending to, it pushes me to work harder, to study more. That pushes my present for the hope of the future. If I'm hoping that race will come to me, it just, I can't hope on something that I cannot change at the present time. So if I'm looking for that race, I need to go in at, on time. I need to do better in my sales. I need to do the now work so that I could have a good future. If I want peace, if I hope for peace in my home, it might just start as stop shouting to your kids. Stop addressing people within your home with a bitter character. But start changing things of now so that that hope of having peace will be a reality. Hope changes our now and gives us a look for a brighter tomorrow. The Apostle Paul in the book of Romans gives us a capsule of what hope produces. So why don't you get your Bibles and go to Romans chapter 5, verse 3 to 5. And it reads, not only that, but we rejoice in our suffering, knowing that suffering produces endurance. Repeat after me, endurance. And the endurance produces character. Repeat after me, character. And the character produces hope. Repeat after me, hope. And hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. When we receive Christ into our lives, this becomes a reality. Hope becomes a reality. Continuously, we should grow more in hope when we have accepted Christ into our life. 
God defined hope for the people of Israel while they were in exile. And in Jeremiah, one of my favorite verses, Jeremiah 29, 11 to 12 says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope, hope and a future. Then, verse 12, then you will call on me and come and pray to me and I will listen to you. We have to acknowledge that God is God and he has our plans, the blueprints of our lives in his hands. And we need to acknowledge that there is hope in Christ. There is hope in God. And that if we do our diligence, our duty as upon calling on a calling on to him, praying to him, their word of God reminds us today that he will listen. That is what hope brings. But it needs to be activated, acknowledging who God is, activating our hope so that our future, he can listen and we can all understand the full plan of, his, of the scope of his life to us. By giving them a positive future to the Israelites, when they, were, they would call on him, they would call on him, he would listen to them and bring about that hope of a restored relationship and provide for them. But some people, I'm not going to say you, right? But some people define hope in the terms of things that they could act, uh, obtain, wealth, prosperity, and success. During these couple of weeks after Thanksgiving, as I prepared to this, for this message, I searched some of the news headlines on hope during the holidays, during the Christmas. And this is, this is what I found very... Hope you understand it. <laughs> From Upstate Newsroom says, retailers preparing their stores for what they hope will be the sound of ringing cash registers won't be disappointed this holiday season as consumers will spend billions more during this pandemic. Analysts are predicted. From the Associated Press, online stores hope sales Pace continues. Online stores, hope sales pace continues. How are you doing with your shopping online? Retailers got what they wanted over the Thanksgiving weekend, a strong start to the 2020 holiday shopping season as, custom, as consumers shop more online with huge discounts on flat screen TVs and more hot merchandise. Mankind has put hope on others rather than Jesus. During this Christmas season, we see and hear the story of, of how God began fulfilling the hope of his people in a way that they did not recognize. No one would have guessed that a baby was the answer to that nation's hopes. A, baby's, a baby can't do anything can't teach anyone, can help anyone, can save anyone, but a baby has the potential or has the potential to do so many things. When Jesus was born, he had potential. God called that baby our Savior. He knew that that baby would do what no others could do. In that baby, there was the hope of Israel on his shoulders. Here was the light of the Gentiles. Here was the blessing of all nations. Here was the son of David who would rule the world. Here was the child of Eve who would crush the enemy. But he was just a baby, born in a stable, his life in danger, 
But in his birth, everything, and I mean everything, changed. Everything changes when we open our hearts to Jesus. Our world changes just like the world changed back then. And how does this hope come about through Jesus? And how can we uh, adapt or, or make applicable this hope of Christ? Well, thank you for asking. We have three Ps today that we'll talk about. One of them is the purifying hope that we find in him. 1 John chapter 3, verse 2 to 3 says, Dear friends, now we are children of God, and what we will be has, no yet, has not yet been made known. But we know that when he appears, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as is. Everyone who has this hope in him purifies himself, just as he is pure. The hope of the Lord soon return, because he is coming back. He did just he he did not just uh, uh, was born and and he died for our sins and he gave us eternal life. But no, he has given us and promised us a bright future. Even though he has departed, he said, I will come back. And for us to understand that and for us to live that, we need to be purified just like he was when he was here and be ready and willing to accept his return because Jesus could come at any given time. But that hope of his return should purify our hearts and should keep us away from practicing things that are not of him or that are keeping, keeping us away from God. He's coming back. And our hearts need to be pure. Our actions need to be pure. The word of God says, right, we just read this, when he comes, he brings hope. He came. He is knocking at the door of our hearts, asking us to come in. For us to acknowledge his love, his eternal life, his forgiveness of our sins, and our, the hope for a bright future. Our hearts need to be pure. Our actions need to be like his actions. Our hope needs to be his hope. Second P is the protecting hope. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 8. But since we belong to the day, let us be self-controlled, putting on faith and love as a breastplate and the hope of salvation as a helmet. The hope of salvation as a helmet. This hope is a protecting hope. It protects our salvation. It doesn't let us divert from place to place. As far as it doesn't let us jump from church to church. Oh, that might have hurt somebody today. This hope is able to protect us as well to look on with expectation to the completeness of our salvation. That is the hope. We're saved. I'm ready. Let's move forward. Let's get that helmet on and move, move forward upon where he wants you to be. Where are you? How's your helmet? How is your hope on acknowledging that you have been saved if you have how are you dealing with that? Are you controlling everything that is in your mind so that the darts of the enemy don't penetrate into your thoughts? 
But are you putting that helmet of salvation? Because our hope is on that salvation that Christ gave us. This hope of salvation as a helmet help us with our attitudes by protecting our thoughts. As believers, we need, when, when we put on this helmet of hope, our focus, our focus turns to Jesus, who is our salvation. With my focus, with your focus on Jesus, our desires become his desires. To see my relationships with him to grow in his relationship, to understand what draws me closer to him is knowing where we stand with our salvation. And by keeping that hope before each and every one of us, Jesus, our source of help, will enable us to strive to do what is right. And to avoid sin, temptation, diversions, illusions, manipulations of our minds. But have a joyful attitude because of this hope in Jesus. Our third P is a positive hope. Hebrews chapter 6, verses 19 to 20 reads, We have this hope as an anchor for the soul, firm and secure. It enters in the inner sanctuary behind the curtain, where Jesus, who went before us, has entered on our behalf. has entered in our behalf. Positive hope. He's done it. It's good to know somebody has done it for us. Thank God it wasn't me. Thank God the hope was not on me. Thank God our hope is still in Jesus Christ, not on us. I remember my early years as I used to boat around Long Island in the, in the coasts, the Sound, the South Shore. We used to go over by the Bronx. And there was a harbor there that if you get caught in that area in the Bronx and Long Island, Queens and all that, that th those boats that would get stranded not being able to move around too well because of the waves or, 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 or the winds or, or the storm, they would have a ship. They th it, was, it was huge. This ship had jet engines. They would shoot out there where you were, and I saw them firsthand what they did. I really didn't understand somewhat what they were doing. But later on, I found out why. So this, when there was a boat stranded out there, this ship would, be, would head out there and would grab the anchor and pull that boat in until the anchor was put in the harbor. And slowly, that boat will come in and would be safe. Believe it or not, Christ is always doing that. He lets us go out there, out in the sea, experience life a little bit. But when we're ready, just like what we read in Jeremiah 29, 11, we should call on him and radio him in. And trust me, the positive to acknowledging what that means to us is extremely important. Just as these guys would radio in this boat to go out there, we have the privilege, we have the hope that we could call on Christ. He'll go out there and rescue us and put the anchor 
in the right place. Sometimes our anchors go in different places that they should not. Our anchors should be in the hope of Jesus Christ. That is good news. That is positive to our lives. That is acknowledging the positive of hope in Jesus Christ. So the Christmas story just now ended. And there was a purpose to it. It's nice to have the Christmas tree and the wise men and everybody else who participated in acknowledging that. But in all of that, in the master plan of that was the hope of our future. And that hope was Jesus Christ. And obviously that hope came with a promise. A promise of his return to come back for you and I. John chapter 14, verse 3 reads, And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself. This is Christ speaking. That where I am, there you may be also. John welcomes us in that chapter at a moment in life when we, they're speaking to the master. They're speaking to Christ. And he's saying, listen, put your hope in me. That wherever I go, you'll be there with me. Jesus was about to be crucified before he said this. And he said he would prepare a place for you and I. And that if anybody would have that hope or would anchor that, put their anchor on that hope, you will, would have an eternal life. But he did tell us that he was going to return. What a great promise. That he is coming back for each and every one of us who believe and hope in Jesus. And not only did he just gives us, gives us that outlook into life, he also gives us a promise of an inheritance. In him, in Ephesians chapter 1, verses 13 through 14, uh, look it up in your Bible. It reads, In him you also trusted after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also, having believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, who is the guarantee of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession to praise, to the praise of his glory. The Spirit of God has sealed us. We belong to God, and he will take possession for us when Jesus comes. How are we to respond to this awesome gift of God? How? Ephesians chapter 1, verse 18 reads, Paul asked that you may know what is the hope of his calling. Today, there's a calling. Today, there's a calling in your heart. And it's that calling, a simple calling. And that is, will you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? He came to free you from your past. He came to give you power for your future. And today you have the privilege to look ahead, experience what's around the corner, change your world, bring peace to your life if you only put your faith in the hope of Jesus. So today, as we finish 
this series. It's a simple question out there. What's your hope in? What have you put your hope in? Have you put it on your job, on your business, on an individual, on your kids? What's your hope in? For all we know that Jesus is still knocking at the heart, at the door of your heart today. Will you receive him so that you would experience hope in a brighter future for your life? If so, I'm glad today is the day that God has made and we will rejoice as you enter into a new season of your life. Knowing that he's, what he has done in your past, what he's doing in your present, and what he wants to do in your future. So today I just ask you to bow your heads. As we pray and we ask the Lord to come into our hearts. Lord God, I give you thanks today. I give you thanks because you have acknowledged who I am. You've created me for a purpose. You have given me life to do greater things on you, for your name and for your purpose. Lord God, today I pray for those individuals who will soon, shortly, will proclaim you as their Lord and Savior. Thank you. Thank you, Lord, for giving us freedom, power, and hope. And at this moment, if you are ready to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, just repeat this, this simple prayer. Lord God, forgive me for my wrongdoings. Forgive my past. Forgive my sins. I need more of you now at this moment. I want to be free from any bondage. I want to be free from anything of this world. I need you in my life. I want to put my hope in Jesus Christ this morning. And I want my name to be written in the book of life, knowing that if something were to happen, I know I would be in your presence at this moment. Father God, we pray for those individuals who have made this prayer. We pray that you will receive them as your children and show them what a bright, bright future they have in you. We ask all of this and we pray in Jesus Christ. Amen. Have a blessed day. Sunday afternoon, church. We love you. We'll see you here next week.
mercy is falling, falling. Lift up your hands, receive it now. Here in the presence of the Lord, in mercy. Well, thank you so much for joining us this morning. It's been so great to be with you. It's our hope and our prayer that this service has been a source of encouragement to you, that it has lifted and elevated your faith and your trust in God, God who loves you so much, who knows every detail of your life, who is in control. Keep the faith. We love you. 
And we'd like to leave you with a benediction this morning, with a blessing, which is, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face shine on you and give you his favor and grant you his peace, the peace that surpasses all understanding, the peace that will guard your heart and guard your mind in Christ Jesus. God bless you. Thank you.